Hello everyone, this is Usama Naga. This is a preview on pediatric endocrinology. This is a 12-year-old boy with a short stature. He had normal growth from birth until six months. Then his growth velocity declined until age of three. Then it started to be within normal range after age of three. And his father was a late bloomer. Bone age is delayed and testicles are prepubertal. -pre what is the most likely diagnosis? Familiar short stitcture, growth hormone deficiency, constitutional growth delay, idiopathic short stitcher. The correct answer is constitutional growth delay. The key words here that the boy number one is short. He has he had decline in growth velocity in the first three years. Then it start to be within normal range, like for example, uh, five centimeter for example per year. And his father was a late bloomer. The father had the same pattern as uh, his son. And the bone age is delayed, not advanced. And the testicles are prepubertal. He's not pubertal. So the most likely diagnosis, this is a benign condition well known as constitutional growth delay. As you see here in this uh, growth curve, the weight is within normal range, but the height was uh, was slowing in the first three years, then continue to be in the low borderline normal growth velocity, then start at age of 15 to 16 to reach the 50 percentile. This is a classic growth curve of constitutional delay of growth and puberty. Constitutional delay of growth and puberty is common, very important to know how to recognize it clinically in real life and on the board exam. Usually that you will have family history or positive family history of growth and pubertal delay. You, if you do bone age, the bone age will be delayed. You will have the history of decline in growth velocity in the first three years of life after normal growth in the first six months. Linear growth is below but parallel to the lower percentile of the growth curve. Growth hormone and the thyroid studies are usually normal. This child will reach normal final adult height. Management of constitutional delay is very simple. Reassure the parents and the child for future or normal future pubertal development and height. Clinical observation. If significant psychosocial distress, the child is so stressed because he's short, refer to a pediatric endocrinologist. For a short course of testosterone at age of 14, Testosterone uh, dose is 100 mg IM monthly for three months. The goal of the testosterone therapy to facilitate pubertal progression, promote earlier initiation of pubertal growth spurt. Very important to know that this three months or this three uh, uh, months doses of testosterone will not affect the final adult height. We have a five year old boy his height is less than 30 percentile. Growth velocity is less than 3.5 centimeter per year. He has a small penis or microphilus, delayed bone age. What is the most likely diagnosis? Familiar short stitcher, growth hormone deficiency, constitutional growth delay, idiopathic short stitcher. The correct answer, growth hormone deficiency, very likely. Why? Because is, uh, the, the height is less than 30 percentile, growth velocity is abnormal, is less than 3.5 centimeter per year. This is very low growth velocity or growth rate. Uh, and also microphilus or micro, micro penis is a risk factor for growth hormone deficiency. And also the bone age is delayed. This is a, a growth curve. Uh, of a child with growth hormone deficiency showing the deceleration after age of three uh, and the uh, hormonal therapy started at age of seven and they start to normalize to 50 percentile. This is a four year old female with severe enlargement of thyroid gland. She's having fatigue and daytime somnolence. Her TSH is very high more than 150 and the free T4 is less than 0.4. Her anti thyroid peroxidase antibodies are significantly elevated. What is the most likely cause? Gravis disease, congenital hypothyroidism, central hypothyroidism, or Hashimoto thyroiditis? The correct answer, Hashimoto thyroiditis. Hashimoto or autoimmune thyroiditis. It is an autoimmune thyroid disease. It is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in children older than six. Girls are two to three times affected more than boys. Positive family history is very common. Very important to be familiar with the common association with Hashimoto thyroiditis, commonly associated with type 1 diabetes mellitus, celiac disease, 
Addison disease, Down syndrome, very common, Turner syndrome, Noonan syndrome, autoimmune, polyglandular syndrome type 1 and type 2. Clinical presentation of Hashimoto thyroiditis goiter or enlarged thyroid with no symptoms. This is the most common. If the patient is having low thyro thyroxine or hypothyroidism with Hashimoto, they will have growth retardation, fatigue, constipation, dry skin, weight gain, other symptoms including depression, dementia, and other psychiatric disturbances, decreased school performance, so-called intolerance, hair loss, menstrual irregularities, and galactorrhea. Physical examination, the thyroid gland will be diffusely enlarged, firm, and non-tender. In 30%, may feel lobular or nodular. Hashimoto thyroiditis is very common to be euthyroid. Euthyroid means that the TSH and the free T4 are normal. Or subclinical hypothyroidism means the TSH is slightly elevated, but the free T4 is normal. Hypothyroidism means that the TSH is high and the free T4 is low. Hyperthyroidism means that the TSH is very low and the free T4 is elevated. Diagnosis of Hashimoto thyroiditis thyroid function test usually normal. This is the most common. TSH can be normal, low, or high as we mentioned in the previous slide. Positive anti-TPO or anti-thyroid peroxidase and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. This will confirm the diagnosis management. Follow-up labs every six months if you thyroid or the thyroid function is normal and no symptoms. If there is evidence of hypothyroidism, we have to start to live with thyroxine. Propranolol and methamazole if hyperthyroidism. Fine needle aspiration guided with ultrasonography if thyroid nodules. Disorders of sex development. Disorders of sex development. This is a six year old boy with enlarged penis, pubic hair, normal size testicles for age, height on the 98th percentile for age, tall. Blood pressure is high, 135 over 91 millimeter of mercury. His newborn screen was normal. What is the most likely diagnosis? 21 hydroxylase deficiency, 17 hydroxylase deficiency, 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, 3 beta hydroxysteroid deficiency, or Addison disease. The correct answer here is 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. The key word here, blood pressure is high, hypertension. So we have hypertension plus. If it's a boy, you will have large penis for age and normal sized testicles. If it's a girl, you will have hypertension plus very lies like penis like clitoris. In order to understand disorders of sexual development, it's very important to know the how the differentiation and internal genitalia works. So simply, if you have XX, everything will develop as female. But when you have the Y chromosome, the Y chromosome carries something called the sex determining region of Y chromosome or SRY. This will stimulate the Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells will produce MIS, which is Mullerian, Mullerian inhibiting substance or anti-Mullerian hormone. When you have the this uh, substance or this hormone, this will prevent the Mullerian duct structures to develop. So this male will not have fallopian, no uterus, no upper vagina. And also will stimulate, this SRY will stimulate lytic cell and testosterone, and testosterone will develop uh, the Wolfian duct structures, which is the epididymis, vas deferens, and seminal vesicles. Differentiation of external genitalia, you will need testosterone, and the testosterone will need an enzyme well known as 5-alpha reductase to convert the testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, and the dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, will uh, help to develop the scrotum, the shaft of the penis, the glands of the penis, and the prostate. So if you have a newborn with inguinal masses, with or without hernia, suspect androgen insensitivity. The pathology of uh, androgen insensitivity, this patient, they have SRY, they are boys, like XY, and the SRY will stimulate both Leydig and Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells will stimulate the Mullerian inhibiting substance, will be no, no Mullerian duct structures. So this patient, they don't have inside any uterus or fallopian tube and no upper vagina. But the Leydig cells will be stimulated, will produce testosterone. And also the testosterone will be converted to dihydrotestosterone by alpha uh, reductase enzyme. But this patient, they are insensitive 
to the testosterone structure so they will not have epididymis they will not have vas deferens or seminal vesicles and the external genitalia will not form they will have ambiguous genitalia so this is how to understand androgen insensitivity clinical presentation of androgen insensitivity in an older child or adolescent they will present with amenorrhea will be raised as female they will have breast no sexual hair blind vagina the lower vagina is developed no uterus no fallopian tubes they have undescended testes and the elevated testosterone level but the testosterone level is high but is not working because they are insensitive so again this female doesn't have any period she is xy female phenotype xy female phenotype raised as female she has breast no menses no sexual hair she has blind vaginal pouch why because she has mis is normal so and undescended testes and the elevated testosterone level and the testosterone level will be converted preferably to estradiol and estradiol will make the breast develop and they will make it more confusing having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam we have the definitive solution for you, presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams, crafted by Dr. Osama Naga, a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a Last Minute Review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year. By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams!